welcome to another edition of Weekly Digest, a government information agency program that keeps you informed on what the administration has been doing that will create a better environment for citizens. I'm your host, Janelle Carter. Thank you for joining us. In this week's presentation for the period November 7 through 14, 2014, Attorney General Anand Lal says President's proclamation to prorogue the 10th Parliament is constitutional. Cabinet gives its approval for new parking arrangements in the city and $10,000 because we care initiative rolls out in Parmakatoy Region 8. Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General Anil Nandlal has said the President's proclamation to prorogue Parliament is legal and most importantly, it will give members of the combined opposition an opportunity to demonstrate maturity. The Attorney General, who has a wealth of knowledge in the legal field, sought to define what it means to prorogue, stating that it's nothing new, though it might be new to the Guyanese culture. Prorogation, he explained, allows for the suspension of parliamentary sitting as it brings to a halt all the business of that sitting of the parliament. Prorogation is a feature of the Westminster constitutional model which we have inherited from England. It has been a feature of the British legal system dating back to the days of Magna Carta some 800 years ago, so it's not a new concept. When in uh, England uh, delivered independence to all its colonies, it drafted a constitution, which is called the Westminster Model Constitution, and it included in the repertoire of provisions and parliamentary mechanism the concept of a prerogation. So throughout the British Commonwealth, constitutional provisions, constitutions, have that provision in it. According to the Attorney General, now that the 10th Parliament has come to an end, if Parliament is to resume, this would be considered the second sitting of the 10th Parliament and all the business that were a part of the first sitting will have to be brought afresh back on the agenda. In the meantime, this process now paves the way for political parties to meet and have constructive dialogue on the way forward as the administration has made clear its open door policy for discussion. Already, the head of state has held discussions on this issue with the diplomatic corps and various stakeholders of civil society. A large cross-section of civil society has been calling for the combined opposition to show maturity and have open dialogue for the interest of all Guyanese. Parents and guardians of public school children in Parmakatoy in Region 8 were reminded of the need for children to be educated as government outlined the investments in the sector to ensure there are opportunities for all children. This was done when the Because We Care initiative was rolled out in Region 8 communities. Education Minister Priya Manik Chand urged residents of Paramakatoy in Region 8 to prioritize and give their children the life they never had, emphasizing that while education is the future, the educational status of the parents has nothing to do with the future of their children. And we know these kinds of communities, it's very, very hard to deliver services here. When I hear people in Georgetown talking about it, I realize they have no clue what being in this region means. We could build a school here. But your children, many of you, still couldn't come because of where the school is. It would mean you had to walk two hours to or two hours from. So we built doors. Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Juan Edgehill, explaining the reasons for the distribution of the cash grant, pointed to the belief of government that education is a way to a prosperous future. This, he said, has been ongoing for the past 20 years in Guyana through provision of more schools and teachers and programs that keep children in school. And in education... We are now working to ensure that we partner with you parents for the improvement of your child's education. I met a woman earlier when I landed and we were chatting, and I said to her, so how many children you are collecting for today? She told me five. I said, you are a rich woman? She says, no, I'm not a rich woman. It's not my money. It's my children's money. The Because We Care $10,000 grant program, which was launched on October 11, 2014 in Bartica, is winding down, and parents and guardians continue to welcome the initiative around the country. They have expressed this in many different ways, all pointing to using the money to help their children attend school. Guyanese can now enjoy safe, sufficient and affordable water as government has been investing in the water sector to ensure full coverage throughout the length and breadth of the country. The transformation that has been taking place complements the developmental programs that have been people-centered. 
The water distribution program is one such aspect which the government has been allocated billions of dollars through the national budget annually to improve infrastructure. These include the installation of electromechanical equipment and the construction of water treatment facilities along with extensive networking and metering operations. The results of these investments have been tremendous as portable water is now available in over 700 villages across Guyana with running taps in almost every home and yard. It's clear water. Far different. Yeah, a very good idea. Because you didn't use the right qualities you get, you know. Right? This is the time you used to go fetch water from the well. Now we're getting it full of serious. You're getting more water pressure. You're getting a better taste of water. And better quality water if you use a cook, drink, and everything. Over the past decades, millions of dollars were spent on the improvement of water supplies within the hinterland communities. Some of these were benefiting from boreholes, the installation of voltaic systems, and elevated storage facilities. Communities such as Maruka, Kamwata, Haimakabra, Kaburo, Rincon, Itabak, Santa Rosa, Karukabaru, Philippi, Chinapau, Port Kaituma, Mabaruma, Taruka, Kopinang, and several others benefited from these investments. The coastal water supply system was also significantly improved with new water treatment plants being constructed. To further improve the service this year, over $2.5 billion was allocated to the sector for the drilling, construction and completion of wells in Cotton Tree, Hope, Monrepo, Spire Lamb and Sapphire, along with the construction of water clarifiers and filter systems at Bartica and Eccles, the upgrading of service connections in East Burbese and Linden, along with the installation of transmission and distribution mains in areas such as Virgin Newton, Victoria, Crabwood Creek, Angois Avenue and Partica. Two water treatment plants at Wiz Rock and Amelia's Ward will be completed, benefiting more than 30,000 residents in Region 10. Stay tuned for more of the Weekly Digest after the break. Guyana as a tourist destination continues to receive international acclaim. The reputable National Geographic Traveler has named Destination Guyana as one of the must-see places in 2014. The renowned magazine said Guyana is the best-kept secret in South America with stunning natural wonders. This year, increased focus will be placed on enhancing the standards within the industry, focusing on tourism products and services, multi-destination itinerary planning, events management, ecotourism, and sustainable principles and guidelines as well as a grading scheme which will be developed for the industry. In an effort to respond more promptly to citizens, the Home Affairs Ministry has launched an online crime reporting system which allows citizens who possess or have access to cell phones, computers or other devices with internet connections to report criminal activities. Citizens can get instant access to security personnel on BlackBerry Messenger via 2804E429. Reports of corruption can also be made on www.ipaythebribe.com. These reports can be made anonymously. Amerindian rights to land ownership continues to be a high priority for the PBPC government. The signing of a US $10.7 million agreement with the United Nations Development Program has paved the way for the implementation of the land titling and demarcation project, which is expected to provide absolute grants and certificates of title to eligible Amerindian communities and villages. There are 97 titled villages, while 77 others have had their lands demarcated. The Ministry of Amerindian Affairs will be working to process the first batch of 33 communities for land extension and 70 for demarcation under the three-year land titling project. You're watching the Weekly Digest. Presidential advisor on governance, Gil Tishira, describes the opposition's threat to potential future investors as dangerous and counterproductive. It was particularly targeting two ethnic groups. Uh, why didn't they target in other countries? They target other ethnic groups. I'm saying it's not right to target any ethnic group. But what I am saying is that why was it done in that way? And, and, and so it is racial. 
And whichever way we go, our constitution talks about prohibiting discrimination. It talks about discrim not discriminating even on national origin. And the other issue has to do with the fact that they, he deliberately made a threat against all foreign investors. Regardless now, the second part of his statement was against all foreign investors, that if any agreements are made between the government and any investors in the period of prorogation, that they will not accept them. The statements originating from APNU executive Carl Greenwich following a meeting on November 10 in the parliament building saw in part the former PNC finance minister issuing what government views as a veiled threat to certain ethnicities. This statement was irresponsible, particularly since the decision by the president to prorogue the National Assembly is constitutional and totally in keeping within the laws of Guyana, she said. We have investors in Guyana from various countries of the world. In fact, I believe, and Prime Minister could correct me, that I think Canada has the most companies operating in Guyana. In the um, mining sector, In yes. the mining sector, for example. Yes. There are companies um, involved that are, uh, we have now engagements with Brazil and, and, and looking at bilateral cooperation um, and so forth. So that, first of all, I think it was rather deliberate and, and, and very, um, again, dangerous to point out only two nationalities. Why did he do that when, in fact, it is very clear that in, in certain sectors, they're not there at all, or they, they don't have the kind of clout. In. Guyana is open for business and continues to attract foreign investors. The impact of these has been tremendous as it has contributed significantly to the growing and thriving economy, along with the creation of wealth and jobs. The Guyana Revenue Authority has announced that to date 9,999 vehicles have been registered under the PSS series, making way for an influx of vehicles under the PTT series. The administration has taken heed and will commence consultations for parking facilities around the city with the aim of easing congestion. The Ministry of Housing and Water has been tasked with hosting consultations with stakeholders for the new parking arrangement for which Cabinet has given its approval. Head of the Presidential Secretariat, Dr. Roger Luncheon, said the Avenue of the Republic and the South Road Crow Street Canals were identified for introduction of this initiative. Cabinet has favorably considered the proposal from the Minister of Housing and Water for the non-permanent covering, bridging of more main canals in the city. Non-permanent, essentially to allow its removal for cleaning purposes, dredging purposes, desilting purposes, but at all other times for parking. The Cabinet Secretary further expressed his confidence in the Minister for carrying out the task with expediency and efficiency. Once the consultations are completed with favorable responses from the stakeholders, then the Cabinet Secretary noted that it would be time to work out the physics of how to construct non-permanent load-bearing support for those vehicles. As part of a continued display of investors' confidence in Guyana's economy, Rubis commissioned five fuel storage tanks at its Providence East Bank Damarara location, which doubles the company's storage capacity in Guyana. Rubis's chief executive officer, Mauricio Nichols, said the company values having a strong relationship with the government of Guyana and the opportunity to be able to invest in the country. Since the company came to Guyana three years ago, it has invested close to U.S. $8 million. We have made substantial investments in this market. We have rebranded all of our service stations, which now uh, have uh, you know, an image uh, that is uh, second to none. It's a very attractive, very modern, very refreshing uh, image. We uh, invested in relaunching our LPG brand uh, to Rubica, so that was a significant, significant investment uh, as well. We have uh, invested in uh, modernizing our, our, our fleet, our fuel delivery fleet, so we have acquired new trucks to uh, provide better uh, fuel delivery services to our customers. 
And we have invested in uh, significant uh, new storage facilities here at Randsburg. And, um, and we continue to invest. So presently, we are uh, investing uh, in uh, upgrading our berth. The CEO said Guyana is a strategic market for the company because there is scope for expansion and high-level profits. Prime Minister Samuel Hines said the government welcomes all investors regardless of their nationality, religion and race. He said incentives are standard for both local and foreign companies investing in Guyana. As the government continues to look after the welfare of Guyanese citizens, preparations are on the way to deal with the upcoming rainy season. The National Drainage and Irrigation Authority continuously works with the Civil Defense Commission, Regional Democratic Council, Gaisuko and farming groups to ensure proper drainage and irrigation. We had some public tenders for dredging of some outfall channels, especially in region number six. And uh, we are at the stage of awarding contracts for those. So at the onset of the rainy season, we can have contracts in place and have these uh, channels clear. And of course, the recently completed uh, pump stations and the pumps we're acquiring, we have acquired to date, um, those would be used in uh, preparatory work. Along with that, um, the maintenance program that we execute in various areas using our Water Users Association and CDC groups, um, we continue to work with them. Partnering with these organizations and companies, drains are expected to be dug and river mouths desilted. With the Clean Up My Country campaign program, a lot of cleaning has been done around the city and works are currently ongoing in other areas across the country. This is expected to aid in drier land during the rainy season. Stay tuned, more of the Weekly Digest after the break. In an effort to respond more promptly to citizens, the Home Affairs Ministry has launched an online crime reporting system which allows citizens who possess or have access to cell phones, computers or other devices with internet connections to report criminal activities. Citizens can get instant access to security personnel on BlackBerry Messenger via 2804E429. Reports of corruption can also be made on www.ipaythebribe.com. These reports can be made anonymously. The modernization of the Justice Administration system, the MJAS project, has been completed through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank. Achievements made under the project include amended and new laws, training for personnel within the sector, reduction of the severe case backlog, the refurbishing of courts, increased numbers of judicial officers and training, publication of law reports and their indices online, the establishment of a DPP office in Burbies, computerization of several connected systems, among other aspects. Guyana's a tourist destination continues to receive international acclaim. The reputable National Geographic Traveler has named Destination Guyana as one of the must-see places in 2014. The renowned magazine said Guyana is the best kept secret in South America with stunning natural wonders. This year, increased focus will be placed on enhancing the standards within the industry, focusing on tourism products and services, multi-destination itinerary planning, events management, ecotourism and sustainable principles and guidelines as well as a grading scheme which will be developed for the industry. During Cabinet's statutory meeting at Office of the President on November 11, several issues of national concern were discussed. The media was subsequently briefed on Cabinet's deliberations. Following Cabinet's statutory meeting on November 11, the media were briefed on several important topics. It was highlighted that elections in Guyana are certain if the needed dialogue between government and opposition fails. This comes after the proroguing of Parliament by President Donald Ramatar on November 10, 2014. The expectations that dialoguing would be an outcome of this period of prorogation and allow parliamentary normalcy to be restored, that is the big picture. That is the aim of President Ramatar when he made the decision to prorogue the 10th parliament. 
The data entry verification project of the National Insurance Scheme is progressing as planned. However, the verification of the data is expected to be completed by December 31, 2014. The more formidable aspect of the project, however, is the verification. And Cabinet noted, I would say with some concern, the situation of end October with just under 2 million records that still needed to be verified. Meanwhile, in light of the influx of thousands of vehicles on the roadways with more expected, government has agreed to bridge in some of the canals in Georgetown and using these as parking areas to aid the traffic congestion. Further, an enforcement arm will be established by the Guiana Lands and Surveys Commission, which will target squatters. This follows the Commission's petition for support and agreement for the creation of an enforcement unit to which Cabinet has agreed. The fact is that squatting has continued and on the coast in particular, squatting seems to have generated a life of its own. Additionally, James Gregory Quinn has now replaced Andrew Eyre as the new British High Commissioner to Guyana. And Cabinet has approved several contracts which see over $417 million going towards road upgrade and $75 million towards the construction of the Sparna Magistrates Court in Region 4. And now for perspectives with Dr. Prem Mazir. Political gossip in Guyana, now at an all-time high, tells us that Guyana is heading for general and regional elections, as there is no hope that the ruling People's Progressive Party, Civic, can stop this inevitable outcome vis-a-vis -vis the Alliance for Change No Confidence proposal, and further, that the new ruling party will enter political office so long as you have an election. Indeed, this is mere gossip. And perhaps there is nothing reliable about it. But of course, the people who are orchestrating the gossip have to work hard to make their gossip happen. Working hard to make this happen indeed is a strategy to overwhelm both the print and electronic media to ensure that ordinary people lose sight of any good that has come from this government. And perhaps the strategy is enjoying a fair success. But the PPPC has a lot going for it, and it is doing precious little to let the world know of the PPPC imprinted transformation of this country. So why is the PPPC group not making deafening noises about the quality changes it has brought to ordinary people's lives? Nonetheless, demonstrating the PPPC's holistic and positive impact on Guyana requires some attention to the country's baseline data at the time when the PPPC re-entered political office in 1992. However, there are some of those who would say that you should not go that far back because the ruling party has had 22 years to make things right. It is a fair argument, but it does not, it does not cover all the parameters of economic and social devastation that the PPPC involuntarily received as a legacy in 1992. The argument merely addresses the economic and social status of the country in 1992, but fails, but fails to address the parameter that has to do with the consequences, the consequences of this devastation, consequences that penetrated the fiber of Guyana for several years beyond 1992. In fact, Guyana did not achieve financial viability until about the year 2000. Without financial viability, development would have proceeded at a slow pace. And so it is an erroneous position to take when people say we should not harp back to the past and to go as far back as 1992 because the PNC's legacy to the PPPC did not have a timeline that stopped at 1992. That PNC legacy had consequences and implications beyond 1992 and well into the year 2000 and even beyond. Undeniably, 
and with limited resources, the PPPC brought radical corrective action to the PNC's legacy of social and economic decline. The PPPC must continue to outline and publicize these early benefits it brought to ordinary people where necessary. I do not intend to embellish the trail here with numerous statistics on these benefits, but the PPPC will have to act now to inspire voters to sing the song of achievements that will have to go beyond the early benefits brought to the people from 1992. The PPPC already has alleviated the concerns people had in 1992 and some years beyond, and the people have acknowledged this improvement brought by the PPPC government. And so talking and impressing people about these early benefits will not have the penetrative capacity to enlist voters to your camp, as improvements produced by those benefits are by this time a done deal. People's present concerns are extensions of their previous concerns, and the PBPC must continue as it is continuing to address many such new concerns amidst serious gridlock and blockages from the combined opposition, the APNU and the AFC. Consider APNU and AFC's contributions to the termination of the Amila hydropower project and the slowing down of several other public capital investment projects, major conduits for job creation that would not happen very soon because of these blockages by the combined opposition. Nonetheless, the PPPC may have to compose a different song on a different platform and sing it vociferously to gain the attention and secure the motivation of ordinary people. Composition of this different song should not be difficult as the PPPC has a lot going for it. It has done a lot for the people, and especially as the PPP's working class story is yet to be told. Let's tell the story now. Thank you very much. And with those features, we have come to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. But before we go, here's a recap of the highlights. Attorney General Anand Lal says, President's proclamation to prorogue the 10th Parliament is constitutional. Cabinet gives its approval for new parking arrangements in the city and $10,000 because we care initiative rolls out in Paramakotoy Region 8. Please note that Weekly Digest and other government information can be found on our website www.gina.govgy or you can send us your comments and suggestions at gina.govgy at gmail.com. Join us again next week as we highlight more of the government's programs and policies that are aimed at enhancing the lives of citizens. I'm your host, Janelle Carter. Do have a safe week ahead. Goodbye.